There is some exciting news coming in from the world of science. Astronomers are optimistic that they have identified a planet which holds the most definite signs of life. Yes, we might not be alone after all in this cosmos. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, which is on a mission to study the earliest stars and peer farther into the universe's past than ever before, is now focusing on a planet which could be harboring alien life. Our next report telling you more. Our Earth is covered mostly by oceans and they are thriving with life. Microscopic phytoplankton produce more than 50% of the oxygen on this planet, sustaining higher life forms in a delicate balance. But what about other worlds light years away? The James Webb Space Telescope is now primed to hunt for undeniable signs of life on a distant exoplanet. This marvel of engineering will focus its gaze on a far-off planet orbiting a red dwarf star, K218b, located a staggering 124 light-years away. K218b has captured the imagination of scientists because it shares some intriguing characteristics with Earth. It is believed to be an ocean-covered world with a size exceeding that of Earth by about 2.6 times. This raises the tantalizing possibility that it could harbor liquid water, a key ingredient for life as we know it. Scientists are looking for chemical signatures in a planet's atmosphere that might hint at the presence of biological processes. One such sign of particular interest is dimethyl sulfide. This gas is only produced by life, primarily by marine phytoplankton, so its presence means there is life on this distant world. James Webb's ability to analyze the chemical composition of a planet's atmosphere through spectral analysis of starlight filtering through its clouds offers a new window into the potential for life beyond Earth. This mission holds the potential to answer the age-old question of whether we are truly alone in the universe. Bureau Report, we on World is One. In a little over a year, airlines from India have placed orders for at least 1220 planes, 1220 planes. Just last week, Indigo placed an order for 30 Airbus A350s. These are wide-body planes. They are mostly used for long-haul flights. Indigo has ordered 30 of these planes. In addition to that, Indigo also purchased the rights for 70 Airbus A350s, meaning if Indigo needs these 70 planes in the future, Airbus should be in a position to provide them. In June 2023, Indigo placed the order for 500 Airbus A320 planes. This was the largest ever single aircraft purchase deal for Airbus. In fact, in its press release in June, Indigo mentioned how it also, quote, has previous orders which are yet to be delivered. This is for around 180 planes. In 2023, Air India also placed an order for 250 Airbus planes. Orders were also placed for Boeing jets by Air India and Akasa, taking the total to 1,220. Now, this number is basically indicative of India's aviation boom. And the question is... What is stopping Airbus from assembling in India? Now, what do we mean by assemble? The plane, as you see it, is not built at once or for that matter in one place. The engine is flown in from one part of the world, for example. The body is made elsewhere. The door comes in from somewhere else. The wings from another factory, the seats, so on and so forth. Finally, they are all put together in an assembly belt. These are huge facilities. They employ thousands of people. In Canada, where Airbus assembles its A220 family single aisle aircraft, the company employs 4,000 people. It has also created around 23,000 indirectly sustained jobs. On its own website, Airbus claims that the average wage of Airbus Canada's employees dedicated to the A220 program in Quebec is 87% higher than the average salary for all industries in Quebec. A PwC study for Airbus Canada mentions that the economic impact of the A220 program on Canada is $40 billion over 20 years. $40 billion. Airlines in India have ordered 850 Airbus jets, 
in less than two years. Each of these planes costs over a hundred million dollars. The value of the total order, you calculate, and then tell me why Airbus should not give back a portion of this business to India. I will tell you why Airbus must assemble in India. Number one, Airbus is slated to get more business from India in the coming years. By 2030, India is expected to have 220 airports, 1,500 planes, 42.5 crore annual passengers, domestic and international. Today, more airlines from India are looking to fly non-stop to Europe, Australia, the US. More airlines are looking to connect every city and town of India because what you have in India is a growing middle class. It no longer sees flight travel as a luxury, for example, rather as essential, a necessity, which explains why Airbus today is sitting on a mix of orders. Indigo is looking for wide-bodied planes. Air India has placed orders for narrow-bodied A321neo, A320neo, A320neo, wide-bodied A350-900s, A350-1000s, Again, what is stopping Airbus from riding this very wave? Number two, stakeholders are already excited to be a part of India's growth story. The A350 planes that Airbus has ordered, they will be powered by Rolls-Royce's engines. The latter's chief customer officer, even McDonald, has recently said that India is an important market and its future promises to be exciting. Point number three, Airbus is already making helicopters and military transport planes in India. Airbus has signed a deal, in fact, with the Tata Group. The two will be making the H-125 civilian helicopter. Tata and Airbus have also already agreed to build C-295 military transport aircraft in India. So India has assembling experience and Airbus understands the potential. So again, what is stopping them from opening another assembly line? What is stopping Airbus from generating jobs in India? Airbus says the company is increasing its headcount in India. The CEO of Airbus recently said that the company will have 5,000 employees in India by 2025. But also said, and I'm quoting here, actually we are putting final assembly lines but not commercial aircraft, unquote. The question is, why not? Earlier this year, India's Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal said that Airbus and Boeing will quote-unquote at some stage have to consider setting up final assembly lines in India. And he is right, it's high time. In October 2022, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was at the foundation ceremony of the Tata Airbus C-295 aircraft manufacturing facility in Vadodara. Prime Minister Modi said India would soon be manufacturing big passenger jets in India. In March last year, India's Civil Aviation Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya was asked if time has come for Airbus to set up assembly plants in India. He said, and I'm quoting, absolutely, with a capital A. The time is perfect. India has a great manufacturing ecosystem. India has skilled labor. India also has the world's best engineers. What's more, the math is just right. Experts tell us that an assembly facility can put together anything between 5 to 20 planes a month. Let's consider 10 to be on the safer side. 10 planes a month means 120 a year. India alone is placing orders for 800 Airbus jets. And it will need more in the coming years. Assembling in India not just helps Airbus save on the labor costs, but also deliver faster. I'll explain this. As per Airbus, Airbus's order book, it has 8,626 aircraft it needs to deliver. This is as per the orders placed till March 2024. Indigo's recent order, by the way, was after that. So add a minimum of plus 30 to that number. The previous order was for 500 A320 planes. These are assembled in Europe. In France, to be more specific, France is facing supply chain issues. It is no secret. This is being widely reported. There is shortage of plane seats, chips, raw materials, labor. A320 planes are also assembled in Germany. But there too, you have a supply chain crisis. 
there is a war being fought in Europe. Businesses are facing the consequences of COVID-19 and geopolitical instability. There is also a facility in China's Tianjin. And it is from here that Airbus delivers to Asian airlines. But just how reliable is China? How safe is it to do business with China? Companies are moving out of China. They are making in India. It does not help Airbus to be an exception. On its website, Airbus says, the sun never sets on Airbus's aircraft assembly lines. But for that to really be true, Airbus must make India its sixth point of assembly. Indian economy is better placed than all of the five countries Airbus is assembling in. France, Germany, China, the US, Canada. What's more, India is self-sufficient. An assembly point here will not have to depend on quality seats from outside. India manufacturers can make them. India has good relations with all of the Asian countries Airbus supplies to. Airbus also has some of its biggest clients in Asia, Cathay Pacific, Thai Airways, Air Asia, Singapore Airlines, also comparatively smaller airlines like Women Bangladesh, Garuda. Assembling in India helps cater to Asian airlines. It keeps orders out of the conflict zone and outside problematic China. And what's more, India will be the largest market for aircraft for the next 20 to 25 years. Airbus cannot possibly not have a civilian plane assembly line here. Here on Gravitas, we have been telling you time and again about deep fakes. How dangerous they are, how they can mislead people watching the video, how they can basically tarnish someone's image for no fault of theirs. And how the deepfake menace has hit a series of celebrities and well-known personalities. Tonight, I am not going to tell you about deepfake videos of someone else, but how a deepfake video has targeted me. Yes, a deepfake video of me. It's scary and infuriating and basically highlights once again how dangerous deepfakes really are. If you have been watching this show regularly, you would know we have a segment called Good, Bad and Ugly of AI. Well, this is a story about the extremely ugly side of AI. In our segment tonight, we get you the story about deepfakes hitting Gravitas and We On World Is One. Are you wondering what I'm talking about? Have a look at this fake video. So here's the latest news. The Indians get a huge profit from this. The founder of Infosys presented his new project in which he has already invested more than $3 billion. The new project opens up great investment opportunities for absolutely all Indians. Many Indians have already increased their wealth tenfold and continue to do so. No other project has ever provided Indians with such opportunities. Given the interesting features of the app and having seen how it works, we believe it is safe to say that it is legitimate and that the trading app allows users to enjoy trading without any difficulties. We decided to interview him personally and here's what he said about. Now, I don't need to point this out for you. You must have noticed that already. That is not my voice. I repeat, that is not my voice. Basically, I did not say those words, but this video makes it seem like I did. It uses a voice that is not mine to make it seem like I said those things. And if you look carefully, you can see the lower half of my face even looks a bit distorted because it has been altered to make it seem like I am actually saying those words. Just imagine how scary this really is. Now, before I go on, let me just explain to you what deepfakes really are all about. In case you are not aware already, deepfakes basically are videos in which the face of a person is altered. Deepfakes use artificial intelligence or AI to manipulate or generate content to make it appear authentic. Deepfakes are a tool for spreading misinformation and trying to tarnish reputations. The videos appear to look real, but they are not. Imagine having your face placed on someone else's, for example, and that person could be doing or saying anything. Sounds extremely scary, right? If fake news was not dangerous enough already, now you also have a deep fake video of me, a news anchor. Being journalists, we never want to become the story. Unfortunately, that is happening today. 
I was shocked to see this video. Imagine just waking up one day to see a video of you which shows you saying something that you actually have not. And that is why the world of deepfakes is so dangerous because someone can make it seem like you said or did something when you actually have not. Even a president of a country is not safe from the deepfake menace. Take for example what happened with the president of the Philippines. Just a few days ago, a fabricated audio clip featuring the leader triggered alarm. Deepfakes have been making headlines for a while now. The Prime Minister of Italy earlier, we told you, was in the news for her battle against deepfakes, for example. Multiple celebrities have been the targets of deepfakes. Deepika Padukone, Alia Bhatt, Amir Khan, Ranveer Singh, the list goes on. The question is, when and where does this end? And why just public figures, even children, are not safe? Earlier, we told you how a shocking report brought to light the threat posed by AI to children. A report by a US-based child protection organization made serious revelations. The report said that child sexual exploitation is on the rise online. And what's even scarier is that AI-generated images are playing a part in this. As per the organization, some children and families were extorted with AI-generated photos and videos. Imagine children being seen in deepfakes. Like I said, there have been a series of deepfake-related scandals that have made headlines, but they were related to adults. That children are also being subjected to this horrific act is heartbreaking. And now we have this deepfake video of me, a news anchor. Why should anyone have to go through this? You see, the video looks real. It's been made to look real, but it's not. And that's the extremely dangerous part. Imagine the ways in which people can be misled. How would they know this video is not real? When and where does this even stop? The challenges and threats posed by artificial intelligence are real. The threat is as real as it gets. But just how prepared is the human race to actually deal with these dangers? The thing is, there is no getting away from AI. AI is going to increasingly make its presence felt in our lives. There are advantages, of course, of AI, but it is this misuse of AI for such malicious acts like creating deepfakes that makes it a double-edged sword. Are we prepared to deal with these dangers as we hurtle down the path of technology playing a greater part in our lives? The fact is AI-generated fake videos are now becoming a lot more common, and that's a serious cause of concern. And tonight, we are sending out a strong message. First, we are telling our viewers to not believe the fake video that we just showed you. Second, let's have this horrible incident and the many, many deep fake videos of others out there serve as launch pads for more aggressive action against deep fakes around the world. Deepfakes are dangerous and there is no option but to win the war against this menace. Seeing is believing. That is what Gravitas stands for. And in this video of me that we just showed you earlier, you cannot believe what you see and hear. It's a video trying to mislead you. My ability, this channel's ability to influence people is being misused to promote something I never endorsed. This is an attempt to tarnish my credibility, our channel's credibility, and this will absolutely not be tolerated.